It's like that. <laughs> it's like that. <laughs> <laughs> what, baby? Well, we can we can we can start with. We can talk about review. it. Let, oh, no. Uh -oh. no, we're not gonna talk about that. We no, 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 no. That's not that's not the live. No, that's not that. That's not the that's, live. That's tonight. not the topic. That's not the topic. That the topic tonight. That'll be twenty twenty one. Come out the gates. We make sure I share this. All right, what's going on, Facebook family? We are live right now. As you can see, the leadership team is here. We are live and in living color. Tell your friends, tell your neighbors, tell your community in the words of Bishop E, we are on the air. Uh, and uh, we, we are excited about conversation tonight. Um, and we're looking forward to having great discussion, great topics. Um, but this is your opportunity to join in. We're not gonna be here long at all, as all preachers always say. Um, Ain't that what they always say? We ain't gonna be they always they say, say it. Just <laughs> 45 apostolic minutes. That's all we need. <laughs> always say, we ain't gonna be long. I'm apostolic minutes is long I know. Hold up. Now, Kayla. I see something different. Are you uh, uh, Kayla, what? are you are you are you about to come into this dread ministry? <laughs> uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> No, a bald I just, head can spot I just what he don't like have. What? A bald head can spot what he don't have. <laughs> okay, <laughs> yes, sir. Call it out, Reverend. Call it out. <laughs> just wanted to try something new. I've been bald. That S curl <laughs> ministry is coming along. I think that S curl <laughs> ministry. Know. It could be S curl, S -curl too. I'm, you know, That's, that might be what I'm, it is. I'm I'm coil. All right. I want to do something different. Coil. It's coil. I ain't bad at you, pay. man. Listen, Caleb, I'll pay good money if uh, in how much one of our oh man oh man y'all <laughs> it's real all right what's up family i see y'all y'all are coming in by the droves um i'm so grateful for you all joining us tonight again we are joining in with our leadership team if you are joining us right now live Put your comment, put your name, let us know that you're watching. We want to know who's connecting with us tonight. Um, we're not going to be long, um, but we're going to be strong, whatever. Um, it's just a good church uh, slogan to just say right now, but um, we're going to probably throw in a whole lot of that out tonight. Some of our favorite churchy, I mean, churchy quotes and sayings that we hear in church on tonight that's another one Look, on tonight here on tonight on tonight y'all <laughs> i'm so over this on tonight <laughs> but you are on tonight. the placement of tonight you are on it on tonight i wonder we become off tonight that's that's the real question oh no what else will we say at tonight the at, at tonight, tonight. <laughs> just what about tonight or you know do we even have to acknowledge the time we, we how know about now tonight. Now, yeah. now, you know, That's we're just glad word. to have you on tonight. Like, no, just we're just glad to have you. We ain't got to put on tonight at the end. <laughs> um, I'm gonna so start the trend. I'm, I'm going in tonight. In, there you go. Don't in tonight. Going in tonight. Glad, to, glad to have you in tonight. <laughs> <laughs> you say that, I'm like, huh? <laughs> oh, I'm taking it to my next council. You heard it here first. Uh, listen, y'all, I got a sneak peek into the ODC PYPU. What's coming? Rare form. Rare form. Welcome. Speaking about the ODC PYPU, Tubbs. Farmer? Really? Oh, Dude. my. We're, 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 gonna, we're, we're going there in January. That's I'm going exactly to have to be ODP, ODC PYPU just for that night. I'm going to have to be a member just for that. Listen, you already been family, so we might as well just uh, <laughs> go, ahead, go ahead and re re renew your license. I know. <laughs> yeah, I know we're excited. Right. We're definitely excited to have them. January the eighth. So uh, please tune in if you're free. Oh. January the eighth. Y'all listen, Pastor Darren Farmer of Upper Room Apostolic Cathedral will be with the ODC PYPU and our very own president for that wonderful district is on tonight. He's one of our leadership team members, Elder Denzel Tubbs, uh, who's with us. As you all know, of course, our, this is uh, the amazing leadership team 
I don't want to say my, you know, I don't want to claim ownership of them, but I am proud of them. And I'm glad to say that they serve alongside with me, uh, Elder Denzel uh, Tubbs, as well as Minister Jamie Lott and Pastor Elizabeth uh, Clark, as well as Pastor Caleb Kirksey. Uh, these are extraordinary individuals, great minds, and they have put in work this year with me. Uh, for YMA, and I'm so grateful for them, and I love each of them. Uh, Y'all, I, I don't want to do too much talking. I just kind of want to facilitate conversation, but what's on your mind, man? How do you feel about this year with YMA or even some things with ministry? I'm going to start with Tubbs. I'm going to then go to Lot, and then go to Clark, and then make my way to Kirksey, but just take the floor. What, what's on your heart? Just talk to us. How you feel? Like, what's going on? It's, man, it's been, honestly, it's been a roller coaster of a year. Um, yes. because uh, in the early, first quarter or second quarter rather of the year I had a great loss as you all know my grandfather um, went home to be with the Lord in May and so yes, that was the real tumultuous shaky part painful part of the year aside from the pandemic that we all have been dealing with um, but at the other other side of it as uh, Caleb we were talking about earlier um, ministry wise has been a dynamic year the Lord has still been favored the Lord has still provided opportunity to minister even if it's all virtual or mostly virtual um, those are just as effective and just as much of a blessing as traveling and so of course uh, most of us being evangelists and traveling those, those who are watching um, you miss the road you watch old clips of high church moments and high moments in your <laughs> ministry and high moments in the organization and all this and you miss the road you ah but oh, man nevertheless um, the Lord has still blessed even um, in the virtual space. So I, it's been a roller coaster, but um, 2021 me now. All right. So that's all. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> well, what I would say is, is that 2020 has, I mean, obviously everyone came into the year with uh, an assumption of who 2020 would be and proved us all wrong. 2020 did. So, I mean, for me, Obviously, there has been a lot of tragedy this year, a lot of loss. I mean, both within our um, church arena, you've had great giants leave the scene. You've also had people that are well known. Kobe Bryant, guys. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. You no, know, uh, we started off the year at Shiloh Temple in San Diego with one of our, our head deacon passed away. Following that, Kobe Bryant passed away. Following that, um, we we're in a car accident where I almost passed away. But God, you know, so it's really been a year of value in life and understanding purpose. I feel like the whole year has kind of obviously paused, but for me in a bit of a different way, because those who are involved in media ministry, you know, we're still every week, every single week, quarantine or not, you know, we are working and we are serving just in a different capacity. And so for me, it's been uh, a press and people have been on sabbatical this year for me <laughs> and putting in some work. But I believe that was all God's plan because just kind of been looking at what 2021 is going to be, um, not to get extra deep so early on this uh, Zoom, <laughs> but, um, you know, we, we always want a harvest and we always want, you know, God, let us reap what we've sown and all this great stuff, but we're often not prepared to do that. And I think this year has been a year of preparation for me personally where 2021 is going to be a harvest, but what harvest looks like, it looks like work and it looks like in large capacity. And it looks like you having to handle the things that God has put into your lap. You have to be able to pull it up and to reap it. So I'm excited about 2021 pandemic or not. I believe God is going to do some great things pandemic or not. And um, yeah, it's just been a really a year of preparation for me. Okay, I think it's my turn. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's my turn. I was muted. Sorry. Uh, well, praise the Lord, everyone. Um, hey. Wow. What is 2020? Um, first of all, I, I shouldn't be here, to be honest. Um, I was the latecomer to the group. Um, someone was unable to fulfill duties, and um, the Lord saw fit for me to be here. So I'm forever grateful for that, that God saw me this year. I, I think that's my biggest thing this year. Um, yeah. God, God saw me. Um, 2019 was probably a, the worst year of my life. 
and God definitely showed himself strong um, in 2020. I know a lot of people have lost people, you know, and, and um, even myself, I have lost some close friends and family, but I can say 2020 has probably been the best year of my life, though. Um, I have seen God do um, mind-blowing things, things that I just thought of, not prayed, not uttered out of my mouth, and he brought it to fruition. Um, I'm so grateful. I, I would, I don't think I would have ever saw myself being here. Um, I, I tell Elder Cameron all the time, I'm just a girl from South Dakota. <laughs> so um, yeah, I'm nobody, you know, um, but God said, no, you are somebody. And so um, that's, that's what um, I actually have learned this year. Um, I see who God has truly made me be um, and is making me to be, I should say, um, that I can now run with it. Um, he's even changed my career path. I'm blessed to know or to be able to start a new job next week before the new year um, in helping people at HR, just everything my heart's desire. Um, so I'm grateful for that naturally. Um, even with a pay increase, like with no experience, like that's nothing but the Lord. Um, and I said yes to the call. <laughs> that's nothing but the Lord. <laughs> Um, of, of pastoring. And so I just, I really am I'm so grateful for what God has done. He's, he's definitely shown fruit from me as well. Um, he's opened doors I could not see. And um, all I can say is thank you. <laughs> thank you, Lord, for, for all he has done. So, yeah. I concur with all of that. Um, 2020 has been a uh, crazy good year for me. And I understand there's been a lot going on uh, in the news and a lot of people losing jobs and families, things like that. Um, but for me personally, uh, like Pastor Liz said, this has been one of the best years of my life uh, in terms of ministry. Uh, in a year, I mean, before I was uh, a traveling evangelist and different things like that. And I thought this year things will slow down because of the pandemic, but things actually sped up to the point where I'm like, Lord, uh, slow, slow down a little bit. You know, all these different opportunities and things coming virtually and other opportunities. And this has just been, uh, as I said before, one of the best years of my life. And not only in ministry, but uh, in motivation. Uh, there were some times where I felt like I was losing motivation or losing focus. And uh, it's kind of like, uh, if, if, if Jamie, if I may say uh, something, one of your posts you made on Facebook, you said, uh, God used this kind of year to make me whole. I believe it's something she said. And it, it, this year, God remotivated me in some areas. In a year where it's a lot of chaos and turmoil and, and, and all kinds of things, God motivated me and put a fire back under me this year. And I'm like, Lord, I am ready for 2021. I don't know what's going to happen, but this year, God really took some things to another level in me. So I can't leave this year saying, man, what a bad year. Yes, it's terrible in the grand scheme of things, but I can look back on this year and say, this was an excellent year for me, and I'm, I'm ready uh, for the next season. Cam, I think you muted. Bless his name. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and mute everybody. Um, uh, listen, guys, honestly, this is amazing. Um, and I, I want those that are watching, I don't want you to feel as though we are being desensitized to this fact of uh, 2020 um, or the gravity of how this year, the, the, the severity of this year and, and uh, the gravity of the situation that this entire world has faced within 2020. Um, we're not saying that at all, but really we're testifying to the sovereignty of God and how he's been so gracious towards us. And I saw a comment. I've seen all of the comments. I've, I know we have Melanie. Welcome, Melanie. Angela uh, Bennett is in. Um, I see uh, Latoya. God bless you, Daniel. Uh, uh, Lady Aswan, good to see you, sis. Uh, Jay, um, uh, Shana, God bless you. Just to get see, I see you all. I see you. I see you. Um, thank you for joining us uh, in uh, this conversation. Listen, um, I saw a comment that came up, and uh, I think it was my boy Anthony. Anthony said something 
about, uh, and, and I really want to kind of bring clarity to this and, and, and really truth to this because he's, he's right. I strongly believe God has always been doing great things, but 2020 allowed us to see it because we were too busy to see it. I've seen some things this year. And I think that's a powerful statement in the sense we know God has been favoring us and we know God has been blessing us, but this year has created a opportunity for us to really focus on just how truly God, how, truly how good and how great and how awesome God is and how concerned he is with his people. Um, I mean, for us to be able to prosper in a pandemic, I mean, only yeah. God can do that. And I think yeah. that's what this year really proves how much glory goes to him. Yes. Um, and, and we can really say that this is the Lord's doing and it's marvelous in, our, in all of our eyes. Um, now, not to jump ship too, too, too much, but let's, let's, I want to get into something. For all of us, um, I've witnessed it personally for all of us that are on here now. Um, this year has forced a level of creativity. Um, not to say that we're not doing things that we hadn't been doing before, but we're doing it on a whole different level. All of you all, uh, some of us have been in front of the camera but a lot of us have been behind, all of us have been behind the camera um, and producing. Talk to me a little bit about the level of creativity and work you've had to put in to doing ministry from a production standpoint in providing quality content to people. Because whether y'all, those that are watching right now, listen, all of these guys, ladies and gentlemen, have produced and have worked behind the scenes. Some of them, yes, have been in front of the camera, but every single one of them have been behind. Talk to me about what that's been. Anybody can take the floor because y'all have been instrumental in helping your churches, your ministries. Caleb, taking the church that you now pastor that was your father and mother and literally bringing them into a new space, a digital space. Um, where it's, it's, it's been just something totally remarkable. Talk to us about your experience with helping to provide quality ministry from a virtual standpoint. Anybody? No. Can you. Go ahead, man. Yeah. Oh, me? Oh, okay. Uh, oh, whoever, whoever, whoever. <laughs> yeah, that's why I'm here. You can go first. <laughs> okay. Uh, I would say for me, uh, really jumping out into the virtual space was a was a barrier for me so I, 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 mm. I can be shy sometimes of course when I get up to preach that's that's the Holy Ghost you know, people <laughs> say, you turn into a monster I said that's, that's Jesus it's not me so uh having to be behind a camera and now make man everything and go virtual you know I was really nervous like I can't see myself I don't know who's seeing me <laughs> So, but God just kept saying, do it, do it. You know, the, the physical church shut down, but people still need to hear the word. People still need to hear the word of life. So do it, do it, do it. And once I got on, uh, really uh, doing it and, and, and getting on virtually, all of that fell off. It, it became uh, fun for me. It became uh, a source of life for me to get on and, and bring the word virtually. I feel like I've been doing it forever. And I said, Lord, I don't know if you're getting me ready for TV ministry, uh, TBN, the uh, Word Network. I don't know, but I feel good doing this. So it, it really just took my faith and took presentation because I started off just doing, you know, uh, doing it regularly on the computer. Then later I started adding extra graphics and trying to be more professional. So not only did it help me get over the nervousness, but it kind of helped me really start seeing things in a more professional way, uh, see, uh, trying to build up the visual quality of ministry and really seeing where God wants to take my ministry. So God really, he really transformed a lot of thinking for me uh, just by going virtual. You know, it might be a small thing, but it turned out to be something huge for me. So, so yeah. Amazing. Anybody else jump in? Like, I'll go. Here. Listen. Go so, Jamie, you better go. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> you guys already know. 
so I'll, I'll do it from from two sides right because i'm not one who is typically in front of the camera i'm usually behind the camera yma this year has forced me all the way and you're laughing bro but you know all of you are laughing because you know um this is not me this is way outside of my comfort zone but i'm gonna tell you every time and uh, this one lord i thank you for my yma family because I believe that God is doing something through this. I believe he's preparing me to do something more and take another step out there. There are some things that God has put on my heart that, you know, he's preparing and he's doing and what have you. But in order to get to those things, he had to first pull me all the way out of my comfort zone and show me the value of what he, he's placed on the inside of me. Because oftentimes we have things, but you know, oh, what well, God, you speak to everybody like this. No, he don't. And sometimes God has spoken to you specifically and the word won't get out unless you step out of your comfort zone to put it before mm. the people that it's intended for. And so that's what YMA has been for me this year. You know, my own local ministry, I am the media person. And so um, it has truly grown my faith in God <laughs> because technical difficulties will happen. Yeah. And, you know, the saints will get on the line. Well, I can't hear. Well, I can't see. Well, I can't. And you're like, bro, I know. But it, it really, it is a, it's, um, it builds endurance in you. And, and this is bringing it back to the core principles of, of our foundation of faith. It builds our faith. It builds our endurance. It builds our perseverance because, you know, you got a problem solve you. What you going to do? Walk away from the ministry and then the ministry won't be seen. What you going to do? Right. So, I mean, Outside of the technical things that I've learned, God has really taught me a lot of resilience this year through the ministry of the media. So there you have wow. it. Wow. Amazing. Uh, Tubbs, come on in here, man. Because yeah. you've taken even greater Emmanuel to a whole nother level. Yeah. I, I appreciate that. I, I'll honestly say that what motivated last year, of course, traveling. Um, I, I got sort of convicted, though my pastor um, supported me in traveling and everything, and I told him everywhere I went, I started getting convicted that I was not as invested in home as I once was prior to God opening a lot of ministry doors. And so um, when this pandemic hit, there was that whole side of it, then it was also the side of how quality our services are, why do we not have the stream to match it or the programming, the virtual space to match it? And so I seized that moment to be like, Lord, okay, you've shut everything down. So I, I'm, I'm dedicated. I'm dedicating my time to this. And I mean, with 5,000 potential viewers on YouTube and Facebook, and of course, you know how that goes, but potential viewers, that's the emphatic word. But um, I mean, the Lord has really grown our social media uh, footprint um, over the last year. Um, and like, like uh, Jamie said, it has definitely taught resilience. It is definitely, uh, if anything, more patience to deal with um, the saints. Because, you know, I'll be transparent. Y'all know I'm going to tell it like it is. If anybody <laughs> knew it was coming, I knew it was coming. He got a story. He got a story. Oh, here we go. Oh. And here we go. That's the, the moment. moment. That's the moment. You know, you know the, 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 the reality is with anything, anything public, anything ministry in the public, there's always those professionals, those silent professionals. Um, on the other side of the screen that couldn't execute anyway. But they love to give comments. I, I didn't say it. I didn't say it. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, you know, uh, YMA family watching, I think I'm the Donald Trump of the YMA team. I'll say that. Don't do that, bro. Don't do that. Don't do that. You don't mean it. But, but yeah. You don't mean it. You get Strike it. it. Write that from the record. Mike, but yeah, I, I you, you get text messages oh, and emails, all this stuff. Why is like that? Why are you doing that? Why? Is, and of course, it, it tests your patience, but when you really have uh, an understanding on why you're doing it, um, it really motivates you to keep going. And I mean, the Lord has blessed us to help out on the council level and everything. And um, I mean, it's an interesting space, especially um, in regards to how you view view media, view social media, view your social presence, 
um, mm. from here on out because there are some that have already been doing it prior to the pandemic. But people like me, right. who uh, we just had, we knew how to personally post our own <laughs> ministry stuff and we'll throw a video up, maybe every blue moon and all that stuff. But um, you, 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 someone told me a few weeks ago, they said, Denzel is a very fitting name for you because you're trying to, you're trying to make this place Hollywood. I, like, <laughs> I said, like, hey, I don't know if that's a compliment or not. But uh, I'll take it. And uh, yeah, but, yeah, I, I've become very meticulous with how things are like, don't say that, don't do that, don't wear that, uh, put this here, take that out, get that here, get rid of that. It's important. Uh, it, it really it's is important. important. And see, because one thing I noticed, and I'll, I'll be uh, I'll finished after this, is we really evaluated our insights for our uh, church's media. And mm -hmm. constant viewers really reflected our church congregation. A lot of mm. middle-aged or baby boomer saints. And we're like, that's great. We're glad to see that the saints are watching and they're giving and so forth. But at the end of the day, we're trying to reach others. And mm -hmm. uh, how do we become relevant enough to reach others has been mm -hmm. really the focus. But um, yeah, so this pandemic has allowed space for us to really consider those things and, and branch out into that area. And then even for those of us who preach um, virtual services or have been invited to do so, I mean, it may, gives you a whole nother outlook on how to do that because you don't want to be out there looking crazy and have a tremendous have, have, have a god sent word I'm, I'm going there again for saying just, just for a second you no you god you need to go there that's okay god, please that's let okay. me go there you have a god oh, sent word but a demonic internet connection oh uh, you got a god sent word but the host that's bringing you to preach can't seem to stream your video and I don't know, sometimes it's your fault, sometimes it's their fault, but I'll leave that alone. Oh, Praise the Lord. But yeah, Lord. it really just gives a whole nother level of uh, perspective. Um, <laughs> it's a whole nother level. <laughs> oh, Land of pre recording. Here we go. Yeah. Right, right. Here we go. Y'all, this is I, reality. I'll tell you a funny, I'm sorry, Carol. I'll just tell you one funny No, thing. go, man. <laughs> now, my friends here that were there that night during this taping, uh, they know who they know who they they know who this is that I'm referring to, and I will not name drop because I get in trouble. But I was taping one uh, message for a council in the Great Pentecostal Assembly of the Lamb, and I forgot the diocesan bishop's name. It happened. Mighty God. It happened. I said, "We thank God for our diocesan tonight, Bishop." <laughs> oh, oh my God! God. Somebody call me the bishop's name. And so, yeah. thank God for proving uh, that. That's thank exactly God right. For that's exactly right. right. I'm wholeheartedly in <laughs> proving court. Amen. Thank you. Man, I'm Hello. telling you. Wow. So, y'all, listen. This is this is this is what is real about uh, 2020. I mean, really, this year has dismantled so many of um, the mask and things that we can we are able to hide behind with church um, and the normal structure because it has totally caused us to reimagine church, um, reimagine the way church is structured and, and the way um, we do church, the way the, the ministry of the gospel is presented. Um, all of that stuff has been totally reimagined and re restructured and uh, it, it creates a new standard. We've talked so much about a new normal but 2020 has also introduced us to a new standard. And I think if we try, in my opinion, um, to return to the previous model or way of doing church, um, I don't know, maybe, is that me mm -hmm. echoing? Uh, Cause I, I don't know how much echo I'm getting here. Let me see here. Um, I'm gonna just mute everybody real quickly and then I'm gonna mute everybody back. Uh, unmute everybody. But I think one of the things that we have to consider um, when it comes to even this year, um, the, the, the thought of redoing, undoing, um, going back to doing church the way we did it before, it won't work. It, it just, we're in a new day um, and we have to approach it now from a standpoint of consistency. We've been introduced to new things, but now we have to be consistent because whether we believe it or not, Tubbs, you hit it uh, right on the head. 
there is a different crowd, a different group that we're trying to reach. But let's also be honest, that are watching. They are watching. And we don't want to lose them. We don't want to fall short of um, reaching those who we may not have, would have reached prior to us coming out of our proverbial boxes and doing ministry in a different way. Um, so how do you all feel about that? Returning to the norm or returning to things? Because even now from a political and, and, and medical and health uh, perspective, even with the vaccine, everybody's now talking about returning to a sense of normal. But in my mind, after this pandemic, I don't know, I don't know what everybody else is doing, but I'm not trying to rush to just walk around with no mask. Um, I'm not going to walk around just going back to shaking hands and kissing babies and all of those things. Um, there are certain things that we still have to continue to ensure that the necessary precautions are in place. Um, I, I constantly allude to this reference. Um, after 9-11, the whole process of TSA and checking and removing your shoes and all of these different things, that didn't end. It became a part of the, the new normal. It became a part of a consistent standard uh, for those that travel. And so I think that this pandemic has created that even in the secular world, there will be certain things that we have to continue. Like, I don't see it being a problem for people going forward and with, it, with churches um, as we slowly return back to in-person services to kind of continue the method of, we're going to check your temperature before you walk in here. It can't hurt. It can't hurt. So when it comes to doing church, do we just undo all of what we've accomplished this year just to return back to what we used to do? Or is there uh, a necessity, is there uh, a mandate, I guess that's the right word, for us to continue to, in the vein that we're moving and be consistent um, with what we've introduced or what we've, uh, what we've achieved this year? Jump in and uh, well, let's unmute so we can get some feedback from y'all because I know y'all got some stuff. Anybody can take it. Uh, Liz, did you want to go since you didn't get a chance to? Yeah, go, go, ahead. go ahead, Pastor. Thank you. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. That's all you says. That's Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bishop Liz. Um, okay. Well, since I've been put on the spot. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Pastor Caleb. Uh, anyway, um, no, we can't go back to the way things used to be. Um, I know some of the older saints would love that um, and, and would like that, but um, <laughs> um, but that, that, that would uh, make the shift that God created. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Something that, uh, you know, just wasn't you know, it, it was set up this way. Let me just say it that way. It was set up this way. Um, so we that we can't go backwards. We can't go back. Um, um, I think that we have to now take into consideration we have two congregations. We have the media congregation and we have the natural congregation. And so, you know, we have to, um, it, as we talked about earlier, we have to be creative. We have to, you know, really spend time with God and ask him to bring those ideas. Um, I mean, that is definitely something I had to do. Um, I, I don't know a lot about media, but I had to jump in and just start running. And, and as things just came along, um, things have progressed. So um, it just kind of reminds me a little bit, I hate to get all biblical, but um, oh, it reminds me of like after the time, you know, after Jesus died on the cross and now the apostles, you know, what are, changing to apostles, let me say that, um, how they had to, to change. They, they, they weren't disciples no more. They weren't being mm -hmm. taught. They weren't following. They had to actually be the leaders and run and com uh, create communities and preach this gospel. And so now we have to do the same. We have to take this shift and start sharing the gospel in, in different veins and avenues um, through social media and um, we just have to continue to 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 heed to God's shift and <laughs> everything that we do. So that's all I got. Man, powerful. I, I love that 
Um, because what I, I was just telling someone the other day that, and it may not be direct correlation, but I've noticed that one, this is not our first pandemic as a nation and the world. There are several pandemics that have preceded this. And again, there's not direct correlation, but please notice that with every pandemic, there were, it seems like the revival that hit the world was around those same eras and those same times. Mm -hmm. Like the Spanish mm -hmm. flu, I believe, or, one, or H1, I don't know what, what they were called, but either way, hit around the same time as Azusa, or the same time as the real renaissance of the black church and the apostolic movement and all of that stuff. So we may not go back to normal in that a lot of the protocols that have been set in place for being clean and being um, what have you is in place. But I believe as far as the church, we're on the brink of another revival right before the Lord comes back. That's good. See it that way. See it through the lens of the spirit to where I believe God is going to pour out his spirit at a, at a greater level. Um, because he's literally, again, I said it back in my download some months ago, that God has leveled the playing field. Anytime mm. the potter's house is having the same crowd as our Bible classes, <laughs> Bishop Jakes is preaching to 15 people on a weekly basis now. Um, so anytime God has leveled everything out to that point, then literally we're at the brink of what God can absolutely blow our minds with. Wow. Wow. <clears throat> Anybody else? Like, this is good. Oh, go ahead. Amy? No. Pastor Caleb, please, sir. Please. <laughs> First. <laughs> you can go. All right. Well, I totally agree with what both um, Pastor Liz and Zell have said. Um, one thing she said that stuck out to me is when she was talking about how the now apostles became leaders. And I believe during this time, God has formed leaders. Um, God has done a lot of things in quiet. I mean, we've all been quarantined for the most part. There's been a lot of development that's happened in quiet. There is no, the, the bridge has been burnt. We're not going back to normal. That doesn't exist mm -hmm. anymore. Because, mm -hmm. you know, even if we go back to business as usual per se, which would be just an atrocity to God, in my opinion, um, the people are not going back to normal. There are some people, unfortunately, we have to face the reality. You know, we know the word says, forsake not the assembling of yourself. Some people are not coming back to a building. We have to just, let's be real. Some people are not coming back. There are some people who are afraid. There are some people for health purposes who are compromised and afraid to come outside and will not be back outside. We have to be able to minister to that. There are some people that are in different states and even different countries who have caught wind of the broadcast and now want to be a virtual member, we have to learn as a ministry how to cater to that and still uh, disciple people online. You know, they're not going to be coming in for Bible class. They're not going to be coming in for a tarrying session. They're not going to be coming in um, for leadership development or for singles ministry. We have to be able to get them involved and find ways for them to engage and be active in ministry while still removed for us. So, I mean, there is no normal and this is the new normal. Um, and it's just a matter of adjusting. And I believe God has equipped us to do so. Mm. Go ahead, Caleb. I, was, so, I, I want to say two things. Uh, I, I was listening to Elder Mark Moore uh, speak mm. a couple of days ago. He said something interesting. He said before church was in person with an online option. He says mm -hmm. going yes, forward, church would be online with an in-person option. Mm -hmm. And that was powerful to me. It really made me think. But I'm still on the fence about that. I'm still on the fence because I have a brother who plays in the NFL. He plays for the Green Bay Packers. And uh, we might uh -oh. stay. <laughs> I know where Caleb is going. Come on, man. You I'm saying well. we might come stay. On. The people aren't ready to come back to church. But when you look at the football world, they are ready to come back in person. So, I mean, yes, like this Sunday, Cleveland Browns had a game, in-person game where 12,000 fans were there. It's all spaced out, 12,000. And so I was looking at that game. I was like, man, 12,000 people, they just ready to get back to a game. And so it made me think about, do we really think people aren't going to want to come back to church? And yes, there's going to be some people who want to stay online and stay in their houses, but I believe and not just in football or church, if you look around, the reason why the pandemic spreading so much is people want to come back together. That's, that's why. <laughs> so I think there's an innate thing in us that wants to 
get back together, get back in person, get back fellowship. So I'm, I'm the person who I don't think the new normal is stay at home. To me, that's, I don't think the new normal. Uh, I, I feel like the Lord is doing something like Denzel said, revival-ish. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be something, some demonstration, something powerful. But I do, I, I'm not persuaded that the new normal is internet forever, mm -hmm. uh, stay at home. We're not going to be in person anymore because of what I'm seeing in the world, because of what I'm seeing with them, with, with people who are just ready to come back. So I'm getting my, trying to get myself ready for if the time does happen that we do come back, because like Denzel said, uh, we've had a pandemic before. Mm -hmm. and more people have died, not to be insensitive. More people have died and the world moved on and they came back together again uh, and through all of those things. So I, I don't want to get myself thinking that this is how it's going to be forever. I don't, I don't want to get sit, set in that place because I do believe that, like Jesus said, take not the assembly of yourselves together, we're going to be able to come back. So I am not convinced that this is the new normal. I, I'm convinced that this is the temporary normal. And at some point, yeah. So can, I don't can know. I what add something to what, can I add something to what he said? Because here's the thing, I agree with you. I, I guess what I'm saying is the way that we uh, carried on our services, that is changing. Because people, mm -hmm. they want meat. They don't mm -hmm. want fluff. The fluff, that is old. We can't go back to that. There is no, people are hungry at this point for something genuine and authentic. They don't, they're not, we have to make sure that what they come back to is worth their time at this point. It draws them back because the presence of God will draw you. If he be lifted up, you know what I mean? So I think at this point, um, when I say the new, this is the new normal, I mean, we have to be so connected to God to where our services flow and we're not just praise the Lord for the sake of praising the Lord. You know what I mean? Like it has to be purposeful. That is the new normal yes. because people mm -hmm. are not playing anymore. They're not, if I'm gonna come out, they go to that football game because it's worth their time and it, they paid for the ticket, they're invested. So we need to create an atmosphere within our ministries to where people are invested and they're willing to sacrifice, whether it be their time their finances, their resources, we're doing something that motivates people to be a part of it. So I think that's where we're headed as a, as a church globally. And I, I like that. Um, I think where I've always been is like what Jamie said. Jamie simply gave me a definition of what new normal is. And I feel like a lot of people throw around, this is a new normal, without mm -hmm. a definition, without mm -hmm. what is church going to look like, because it's not just going to be internet. Like give mm -hmm. me, and she gave me a good definition of what people want and what new normal could look like uh, in the future. Mm -hmm. And I mm -hmm. think we need to, it's our, it's our responsibility to define what new mm -hmm. normal is. That's the part. The term so. Absolutely. Come on, tell I'm very optimistic. Um, I'll, mm -hmm. I'll at least speak from Ohio. I'll speak from the Midwest and what I've seen in my council and, and the surrounding areas. I'm, I'm very optimistic because we're noticing our, our fathers and mothers of the faith, our pastors, our leaders are noticing how much time I'm going there. I feel, I feel my oil coming. Up. How much time we wasted. We wasted. In our program. I'm sorry, Pastor Caleb. I'm going to need you to pray for me. Well, I know. <laughs> I've been looking at the clock too, like, man. I, I mean, I mean, we, we used to spend and I love, I love our, uh, we honor our presiding bishop tonight, so don't, don't rebuke me, bishop. I love you, sir. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, pre-pandemic, often could take Wasted. anywhere from, Wasted. mighty God tonight. Remarks would be, <laughs> mighty God tonight. I mean, I mean, oh, everything no. was extended. And, and, I, and, and as Donald Lawrence said, as I minister to you, I minister to myself. I do it. I <laughs> you, leader. I admit it. And I know Ohio's watching, so y'all don't get it in those comments, clowning over. But I admit, we could carry on. Praise and worship, praise and worship to, to the word was a, could easily be a, a two, three hours. <laughs> and this pandemic, so true. When you don't have so all true. the antics and the, the, the crowd and all that stuff, 
it has taught us, all right, get to the point. Yes. Uh, because at the end of the day, with all of those things, you have to ask yourself, what was their true motive and intent behind all of that? Mm-hmm. People just got to get on the mic. Some things you call them that to hear us. Some of some of these announcements, they weren't even announcements. Uh, oh, giving God. trophies, give trophies out somewhere other time. Uh, <laughs> just unnecessary carrying on. But then when we provoke the praise, we provoke God to come and move. Mm-hmm. And as soon as He moves, we give Him five minutes. The devil is a liar, and then <laughs> shut it off because exactly we get get it all worked up. Only then to shut it down because we want to control the flow. Like that's no this pandemic has removed and and i think what between jamie and Caleb, there's a balance and Mm -hmm. and what we've all said we've made it mandatory based on our perceptions and our belief uh our belief systems you gotta you can't be at home you gotta be at church where this pandemic has taught us i can meet god anywhere and it's and it's kind of gone against that argument where you can't meet god at home no i can meet him anywhere and everywhere and this pandemic, at some point, none of us were having church. We all had to do it from home. So it goes back to the point that you brought up, and I was thinking about it when you said it with Mark Moore, Elder Mark Moore, what he said, in person with an online, uh, well, online with an in-person option. It, it's becoming to a point where what the church has to understand, we cannot be very egocentric. Mm-hmm. We cannot say, you got to do it this way. Mm-hmm. This pandemic has taught us, if we are providing a ministry, if we are providing a service, let's even deal, deal with it from a consumer-based uh, model. We're providing a service. So we accommodate to meet the needs of the consumer. Um, at the end of the day, uh, Uber Eats now makes it available for people to have food delivered to them um, from all of our big name restaurants. Um, before the new thing was drive up. You don't want to eat inside, that's fine. We'll p- provide driveway because we still want your, your investment. We mm-hmm. still want you to come here. We still want you to eat. So we're making so many accommodations because we still want your business. The same thing. We want your tithe. We want your offering. Mm-hmm. We want your service. So in an effort to provide a service to keep you involved with us, we cannot be so egocentric to think you do it our way. We provide a plethora of opportunities for you to be a part of the ministry. So now that we have and we see that online works, Facebook, which we demonized and said was the devil 10 years ago, and now your ministry survived, your ministry survival depended upon it. Now that we see that Facebook, I'm sorry, Tubbs been getting it in, I had to get one in too. Now that we see that Facebook works, we don't remove these options. And I think that's the balance between what Jamie, Tubbs, and Caleb were saying. We don't remove what we've achieved this year. Um, we now learn how to work with all of them. Um, we now ha- learn how to make it all a part of ministry. We um, now have an e-church. Even if the majority of our church, based on our demographic and our location, let's say for Charlotte, uh, the majority of our church is in person. They wanted to come back. But we still have that demographic who doesn't want to come to church for whatever reason. That's fine. We'll come to where you are because we still want to provide a service. We now have an e-church that is committed to you. If we have saints in other places, let's say not even just health conditions, but someone mentioned it, someone across the country, Africa, international people that cannot be here, that their country won't allow them to come here or whatever the case may be, we can reach them where they are. So I think it's now learning how to integrate the new normal of we now have an e-church presence. We, we know how to provide ministry to everybody. We, if you want to find us and be a part, we got an app. We got a YouTube page. We got Facebook. We got Instagram. We got constant contact. Listen, if you want, if you old school, you want to dial in, we got a call in number. However you want to give, just the same way with giving. You want to text to give, give the five cash app. You want to mail your offering in. We're making so many accommodations because if we want people to be involved, we cannot be so stuck in a mindset to say, you do it our way or you ain't a part. No, if we want you to be a part, we will make accommodations for you. That is called servant ministry. That's, that's called servant, servanthood. 
and that's what we are providing. The ministry has to remember that our mission is to serve the people. And mm-hmm. in an effort to serve the people, we have to make things uh, available to them. So mm-hmm. I think it's just kind of finding the balance of it all. Uh, our time is almost up, y'all. Come on, Tufts. Yeah, what you got to say, man? Come on. I can say something very quickly to that. I mean, and it, it even goes back That's to right. our earlier conversation about media ministry. Um, I told the Saints at Greater Emmanuel, I said, I'm committed, literally in our leadership meeting this week, I said, I'm committed. My whole motive behind really assisting in the media ministry was to give you from home the same feeling you have on Sunday morning when you come to the sanctuary. Yes, sir. I'm committed to making yes, sure I'm praising worship through the word to whatever pastor sings or however pastor um, goes to the mountaintop, whatever it is, you should be, you should be able to push that coffee table back and rejoice in your living room, just as you would in the aisles of Great Emmanuel. Yep. That's the kind of experience I want to bring to you. And you've been preaching like it. Uh, Caleb, you've been preaching like you would at those councils and, and revivals. You, y'all haven't changed. Right. And that's the consistency that I was getting at. How do we achieve consistency even with the integration of new models of ministry yeah. that we've now incorporated into our familiar models, um, our foundational models, I'll use that word, I like that, foundational models with the in-person gatherings and things of that nature. How do we integrate those things and remain consistent? Mm-hmm. We don't want to get rid of it and say, well, it worked for the pandemic, but it's, it, there's no need for it now. No, there's need for it because that's also part of the revival. Mm-hmm. This greater revival that's going to happen yeah. is going to happen tangibly in a way to where it's not just physical. Right. But God is so big, it's mm-hmm. going to be digital. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. It's going to be virtual. Like mm-hmm. people getting the Holy Ghost in their house. Yeah. We're f- how do we now deal with baptism? If an elder or minister can't get to the house fast enough, how do we now deal mm-hmm. with baptism? Do we now have someone call in or FaceTime in or video chat in and wow. they just do the, 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 the prayer blessing and the committal or whatever the, the terminology is for the baptism? And you just take yourself on, like, all of these things we have to now consider as we move forward because it's happening. And it's a part of this revival that is happening. Mm -hmm. So, and does it, because it's different, do we say it's not God? Right. Because technically, (laughs) they were baptized in Jesus' name. We know that John baptized people by literally submerging them. Mm -hmm. But if we do research, we don't necessarily find it in the scriptures, how that process looked. I know I'm messing with folk theology. I know I am. <laughs> Get me love you, man. <laughs> I'm going to stop right there because I don't want to mess with it. But I'm just saying. Don't back but you just like, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> let's do some historical research and really find out how did that process look in every oh. co- because oh. um, as the gospel traveled, um, you know, there became such a great need to where people were hungry. And so mm-hmm. at that point, what did it look like? And even some th- what are some things that were not recorded that mm-hmm. transpired? Um, and some of those things we are facing now, even in our approach to ministry. So. I think when we recognize that there are no boxes to God, mm-hmm. as long as we're following the essence of what God requires of us through his word, mm-hmm. um, the way it may happen may look different, um, but we just have to ask God for wisdom as to how to navigate through those through those different things. So um, before we close, y'all, any, any, last, any last thoughts? What... We, we've been talking about what we're sensing and feeling with this new year. What has God put in your spirit about 2021? And what encouraging word can you give to someone who's watching? Those of you that are watching, I don't want you to log off. We're almost done. we got four minutes left. But I want each of the leadership team members, these incredible people, just to speak to us what God has been putting in their spirit. And I want you to stay watching because there may be a word for you um, before we get off. Uh, Tubbs, let's start with you. We'll go in the order that we've been going all night. Absolutely. Um, 
I really took what the Lord had been dealing with me on um, to our ODC YPU. Um, and that word that kept resonating in my spirit, especially the last month or so, has been the word committed, committed, committed. Mm -hmm. The Lord is saying, or the Lord has been telling us, um, it's time to restore our commitment. How is that possible mm -hmm. when many of us can't even get into sanctuary? How is that possible mm -hmm. when church is wow. accessible? Um, but the Lord, as you said, Cameron, has shown us several times in his word, and even in the history of our forefathers in the 20th century, there have been moments where God moves best in the most inaccessible places. I mean, there's been, there are stories, countless stories where we see um, in certain areas where Pentecost was not received, that revival broke out because someone dared to be committed, dared to be different. And the Bible says that um, the Lord will keep on keep what we have committed unto him against that day. And so that's that's really all that I've been on um, and that I plan to be on going into this uh, new year is really encouraging those that I serve, my family, myself to really enhance or restore commitment to God, whether that be a new level of prayer, a, a, a fresher prayer life or a new level of studying the word, because we can't say it enough in this community of YMA um, that we as preachers, we can't be guilty of studying just to preach, especially in this hour. In this hour, I mean, the saints need a word. They need a tailored word that is as effective, as I said earlier, as effective in their living room as it is in the sanctuary. Because oftentimes we just respond because of the theatrics of church. But what happens when your hoop and the resonance of your voice in the sanctuary cannot be communicated the same way through the screen? I mean, as, as a hooping and as a growling preacher, and all, and all of us are in our right, I mean, there comes a place in time, and that's why Proclaim is so powerful, because a lot of us knew and know the preaching and evangelistic Cameron Adams, but I mean, very few, I, I've even had pastors in our council say, Elder Tubbs, I didn't know you taught. I'm like, well, I, I had to be able to teach before I could preach. <laughs> and so there comes an element now that has been demanded of us to teach, to really rightly divide the word. Because I mean, the, the sad reality is that culture has allowed us to preach with bare minimum accuracy. <laughs> and, and I mean, and still win souls. And so I, I, I quit. But all, all I'm saying is that the, the Lord has really been dealing with me on a new level of commitment. And so I encourage those viewers who are watching tonight that really, really evaluate yourself, evaluate your relationship with God, evaluate um, your passion and to see if everything is in alignment with God's will and it will drive you to further commitment um, in him. All right, so I guess that's me. I've been unmuted, that's me. Um, no, just to piggyback up off of what you were saying, Denzel, is that is actually our church's theme is fully committed. So that is confirmation. That is a real thing because I think in this, this era, God is teaching us a new level of commitment because when you're at home and you're not going to a church every Sunday or you're not going to a church every Tuesday or Wednesday or Friday for evangelistic service or whatever the case may be, you have to develop a new level of commitment between you and God. That's accountability. No one is gonna say, well, you didn't show up for church. It's, it's between you and the Lord at this point. You have to love him for real. You really have to love him for real. But uh, what God has been dealing with me about, uh, the tail end of what you said is so accurate in this, that we need to pray for strategy for 2021, because the way we've been doing it, we cannot do it anymore. And there is a beautiful harvest that God wants to give us. Like he was dealing with me earlier, there's a beautiful harvest God wants to give us, but unfortunately we don't know what reaping looks like in this season. And so we really need to pray for strategy on how to reap and how to maximize the reaping. Because when God says, okay, so I'm gonna give you your harvest, you get to reap what you've sown, that may look like an idea, but you gotta work that idea. That might look like a, a, a small concept. Well, you think it's a small concept, but that's, that whole thing is, is ooh, it's exceeding and abundantly. But unless you know how to reap and to open that thing up, you're not gonna reap the harvest. And so at this point, I believe God is, is 
really wanting us to seek him for strategy and wisdom on how to harvest, on where to harvest, where, where our reaping is, and how to actually take those actions in the upcoming year. So that's really what he's been dealing with me about. Liz, come on. Come on in, sis. <laughs> I don't know if I can follow that. That was good. <laughs> that was so good. Um, um, well, I mean, honestly, to piggyback off that, I mean, like she said, you know, we have to strategically seek God on harvest. Um, but, and, and as you said, Elder Cameron, um, we have to open our minds to different. I, I, I've heard that for the last couple of weeks that God is going to do some things differently. Um, he may do it rapidly and he may do it differently. And so we have to be open to change and change is hard. Change is hard to shake off. <laughs> um, and and our, the old way, I should say, is hard to shake off. Um, and, and embracing change is, is, is not easy, but um, I think this quarantine should definitely get us prepared for whatever, because, you know, when you're desperate, you don't care. <laughs> you, you just run, you just go with it and you just you let go. Um, but uh, that that's one part. But um, the last part I wanted to share um, and encourage everybody in um, it's Luke chapter five. Um, God showed me this and I preached it on Sunday. And then um, Elder uh, or Pastor Chris Foster I don't know how he even knew this, but he taught it on Tuesday night. Um, so you all go back and listen to him. <laughs> but um, he did no justice. I did no justice to that. <laughs> um, but but Luke chapter five, where uh, Jesus was was teaching to the multitude, and then he tells Peter and uh, the the fishermen to go and uh, launch their their uh, their net out to the deep. And um, the New Living Translation says it's not the King James, so y'all don't crucify me. <laughs> um, but the, the New Living Translation said this time um, they brought back a great harvest. And that part right there, this time, I know a lot of us have tried in ministry. A lot of us have tried in life. A lot of us have tried in various areas of, of, of life. And, and like I said, spiritually. But um, and, and, it, and some of those things have failed. Some of those things were overlooked. Some of those things um, no one even knows about. Um, but I, I want to encourage you that this time next year, <laughs> this time next year, you could see a, a blessing. You will see it in your hands. You will see it come to fruition that God was setting you up. You know how there's always the trial run or, you know, um, when there's a new program, they give you seven day trial. Um, that That's what God was doing for you. Um, and that's what I'm speaking to you. Um, and, and I'm believing for myself is that there, there have been a lot of things for me personally um, that I have failed at, that I have not accomplished. And, and, and I see God, even within this year, he has restored, he has given greater. And that's the thing is that it's, it's going to be greater. What you thought was is not it. It's, it's actually greater than it, it's beyond your mind. That, and that's biblical, you know, it's beyond what we could think or ask for. And, and that's what I, I truly can testify to that. And so this time um, is, is the word I want to leave with everybody this time. And so, like I said, even prior to this, it may be different. It may be um, unnormal. Um, it may not happen the way um, it happened for other people. So don't try to compare um, to, to everybody else's blessing and how they got blessed and uh, how long you known that person. You may get married within a month. I don't know. But, you know, whatever the Lord chooses to do, let him do it and, and, and know that it is of, of the Lord's doing. So that is my encouraging word tonight. Amen. I guess I'm here to take the offering after that. <laughs> That was powerful. Preach, Liz. Uh, and I, I'm, I'm going to go on, uh, online with that. What the Lord has been really putting in my spirit for months is the fact he, he, he kept saying the rain is coming. The rain is coming. And I've been just bringing that word out in many different areas and places. The rain is coming. The blessing is going to be released. The, the resources are going to be let out of the heavens, God is about to release uh, some, 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 the dreams that he told you 10 years ago, five years ago, however long, it's, it's the prophecies are about to be fulfilled. And he's been just showing me uh, just because pandemics happen doesn't mean God slowed down. 
we might have slowed down. God doesn't slow down. Even at the beginning of the year, I think the pandemic really hit for us around spring. And he told, he had me look outside. He said, pandemic hit, people slow down, but spring is still going forth. You know, the seasons are still changing. Nothing, you know, I, there's no handcuffs on me. So things might have slowed down, but God is, his calendar is still rolling. So what he has for you is still getting ready to come to pass. And what he really took me to, uh, and not only to be ready for the rain to be released, but for us to prepare our chariots. Uh, he had me looking at uh, Elijah when the rain was coming. Elijah told Ahab, he said, prepare your chariot and get down that the rain stops you not. What was supposed to be a blessing, if you move too slow in your preparation, it will be a curse for you. If you move too slow, it will hinder you. So he said, get yourself together, Elijah. Get your chariot and ride so that what's about to come down does not hinder you. It will actually be a blessing. So that's what the Lord has been. That's why I've been starting new businesses, getting my papers together, everything together. It's like, Lord, I'm, I'm ready. I'm not slowing down. I'm not uh, let insecurities slow me up anymore. I'm, I'm ready to move. So I pray that for somebody. Get your stuff ready. Prepare yourself. Like T.D. Jake says, get ready, get ready, get ready. Because God is about to do some great things in your life. If you are prepared uh, for this new season. God bless you. Oh, my God. Y'all, there is nothing else to be said. Uh, May. If, listen, if y'all didn't catch this this live tonight, y'all need to go back and watch it. Um, if y'all even just fast forward to the last 10 minutes, like, you, y'all, no, you need to watch the whole thing. I'm sorry, I ain't going to lie to you. But, wow, I know that is the word of the Lord. Everything that you all have shared, I know that's God because um, it confirms some things for me. Even, Caleb, you said something. I'm not about to let the cat out the bag just yet, but uh, he said something that definitely hit it home. Uh, but uh, y'all, you've spoken life to me, and I know that you've spoken life to those that are watching. Listen, uh, if you do not, if you have not had them come to your virtual church or anything, uh, this is Elder Denzel Tubbs uh, in the burgundy sweater. This is Minister Jamie Lott in the burgundy sweater. This is my sister, uh, Pastor Liz, in the leopard, ch cheetah, whichever one, print shirt. Uh, <laughs> and this is uh, the bodybuilder, artist, muscle man, Caleb, uh, with the Malcolm X glasses down beneath me. Uh, listen, if y'all ain't had these phenomenal voices, and I'm not just saying that because they're family. I mean, they have word. I cannot stand bad preaching and teaching they have a word from God. They study. Uh, they have absolute sound doctrine, all right? Uh, I can't emphasize that enough. You need to get them uh, to your ministries. I love all of you all. If we do not return to YMA in a virtual setting like this before the year is out, we love you. And uh, we hope that you have a wonderful Christmas and a wonderful new year. And we'll stay connected. I will do something, but if we don't connect in the usual sense as, as we have throughout this year, uh, we just want you to know that we love you, we're praying for you, and I hope you heard everything that God's spoken through these incredible voices, um, because that's the word of the Lord uh, for you and for your friends and for your family. All right, we will talk to you all soon, and Lord willing, we will see you uh, in the new year, and uh, take care of yourselves. Family, I appreciate y'all. Thank y'all for joining me tonight. Oh, thank you. Love you, Love you guys. Love you all. All right. We'll see y'all soon. Be Merry blessed. Christmas. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we, we gotta we gotta let ourselves go. <laughs> oh, you're the host, Nintendo. <laughs> Bye, everyone. God bless your family. <laughs>